Our next speaker is uh, Xavier Mariette, uh, who's professor of rheumatology and the head of the rheumatology department at uh, Hopital by Centre in uh, University of Paris. And um, he's going to give us an update on Sjogren's syndrome from pathogeny to treatment. Good morning to everybody. The, the sun has come back, uh, but I have to speak this morning uh, about a, a desperate topic in rheumatology, uh, which is Sjogren's syndrome. Why desperate? Because today, Sjogren's has a reputation uh, to be a, a disease where there is no treatment, patients are very sad, never happy, they always come back to your office and say, oh, doc, no, I'm not well at all, no, I'm dry, I have pain, I'm, I'm fatigued, I'm not well. And it's clearly a disease disease. So let's begin first. Uh, I realized that I forgot, I missed a slide yesterday and I didn't show you my conflict of interest. And we say in Europe, we have to spend 10 seconds uh, on this slide. So it is for two talks. So we have to spend 20 seconds for this slide. <laughs> so let's move now to uh, this uh, peculiar disease, which is Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, maybe you don't know that the disease uh, actually was discovered by a Frenchman uh, in 1924. And this Frenchman, as a name, was Henri Gougereau. And sure, Gougereau was dermatologist in St. Louis Hospital in Paris, and I used to work for 10 years in this hospital. And three years later, the disease was also described by a Swedish who was an ophthalmologist. And this Swedish man was Henrik Sjögren. And in France, we call the disease Gougereau Sjögren. But in all over the world, it is only Sjögren syndrome. <laughs> because Gougereau published in French. <laughs> and even at that time, if you publish in French, nobody reads you. <laughs> so what is this disease? This disease is a systemic disease, and I don't like the, 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 the name of people for designing a disease, and so it should be called, as Harry Mutsopoulos proposed, autoimmune epithelitis. Because the, in this disease, there is an autoimmune aggression around the epithelium, all over the tissue, all over the organs. You know the main symptoms, it is the four symptoms are there, xerostomia, xerophthalmia, arthralgia, and fatigue. This disease is relatively frequent. We don't know exactly the prevalence, but there was a good study from the UK, from Simon Bowman, showing the prevalence could be between 0.1 and 0.6, the prevalence of primary children. And uh, so it is a second systemic disease after rheumatoid arthritis in terms of prevalence. Nine women for one man, and that's very important. And this disease is at the confluence of autoimmunity because it can be primary, but it can be also secondary to RA, lupus, dermatopolymyositis, and scleroderma. And the second uh, particularity of this disease is, is we will speak, we'll speak again, uh, again uh, on that, it is the autoimmune disease for which the risk of lymphoma is the highest among autoimmune diseases. So the frequent clinical symptoms, we, we, we spoke of that, and you know that the, the, the patient have pain. This pain can be due to uh, synovitis, but in most of the cases, you don't have any synovitis. You may have, but sometimes you just have arthralgia, myalgia, you have fatigue, which is very important in this disease, and you have dryness, which uh, gives xerostomia, xerophthalmia, but also cutaneous dryness, vaginal dryness, and this dryness is very disturbing for the patients. You, an example of a dry mouth here. And here you, know, you all know the Schirmer's test, which allows to measure the secretion of tears. And uh, it is very easy to, 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 to practice. You put just these uh, this, uh, this small, uh, this small uh, uh, chips uh, of paper, and you look at the uh, level of uh, uh, moistening. So in 202, we had a, a very important advance uh, for defining the disease, because the symptoms are so frequent among the general population. We estimate, for example, that in the US, 10 to 15 percent of the people in the general population suffer of dryness. So what is really sure And in 202, there was a consensus among experts from America and from Europe for defining these six criteria for defining the disease. 
And you, the disease is present if four out of these six criteria are uh, present. And what is very important, to be sure we deal with an autoimmune disease for explaining fatigue, dryness, uh, and pain, uh, it's mandatory to have at least one immunologic abnormality. And it is either an infiltration on the salivary gland biopsy by at least one focus. One focus is a nodule of at least 50 uh, lymphocytes. And if you have at least one focus for four millimeter square, it is grade three of chisel. If it is two or more, it is grade four of chisel. And the second immunologic criteria is the presence of autoantibody, not only antinuclear antibodies, but anti-SSA or anti-SSB. There are some exclusion criteria because some diseases can lead to dryness. Uh, some infections, HCV or HIV infection, cervical radiotherapy, pre-existing lymphoma, sarcoidosis, which is a systemic disease which can affect salivary glands, graft versus host disease, and number of drugs can lead to uh, dryness and like, uh, have, it can have an anticholinergic effect. So this is an example of a salivary biopsy with this focus, you see one here, one here, which involves the uh, tissue. And here you see a duct which is uh, enlarged, with dilated duct. So with this definition, this definition improved a lot uh, the publication because now when you see a paper on Sjogren's, you have this uh, definition of the disease. So it is, uh, it is a, a classification definition. Is it a diagnostic definition? I don't know yet, but it can be, I think, also useful for the diagnosis because in my practice, number of patients were called Sjogren's, whereas they don't have Sjogren at all. So they just have dryness, fatigue, and pain. So with this definition, we have one third of the patients without any anti-SSA antibodies. And it means, by definition, this patient mandatory have at least one focus on lip biopsy. You have one third of the patients with anti-SSA and one third of the patients with both anti-SSA and anti-SSB for unexplained reasons today. You cannot have, in most, in the in majority of the cases, anti-SSB without anti-SSA. It is but the number of the patients we all see in our office every day uh, come, doc, I have pain, doc, I have fatigue, I have dryness, but don't fulfill this criteria. So what do have these patients? These patients may have uh, Sjogren, but not fulfilling this criteria. It's clearly possible because you can have missed the nodules and, and so on. Other cause of Zika and uh, the, the drugs are the main cause of Zika, but frequently you don't find any cause of Zika. Uh, you, don't, uh, you, you don't have any immunologic abnormalities, and these patients look like fibromyalgia patients. They are very close to fibromyalgia patients. And we propose, in, uh, you see, uh, in two or three, uh, two kind of definition for defining these patients. Uh, Paul Venables in UK proposed DEMS, dry eyes and mouth syndrome, and we proposed in two or three SAPS, Sika asthenia polyalgia syndrome. And it means, actually it means that Sika can be a part of fibromyalgia because clearly these patients are exactly the same patients, the same patients as fibromyalgia patients. We think, but we did not demonstrate at all, that this entity could be of psychosomatic origin, but we tried to do some uh, psychologic tests in these patients, but today we didn't find anything specific for this kind of patients. So, let's come back to the autoimmune disease. A serious complication may occur in this disease, and they may be, they may be very various. And you can see, uh, it can be a neurological complication, you can have vasculitis, you can have multiplex neuritis, but you can have also pure sensory neuritis, uh, which is uh, very disabling. You can have pulmonary complications, bronchial complications, you can have renal complications, you can have uh, uh, cutaneous complications, synovitis, a true synovitis, even though it is primary Sjogren not associated to rheumatoid arthritis, renal phenomenon, parotid enlargement is very common, and the most uh, severe complication is the occurrence of a lymphoma. Uh, and it's clearly a challenge in the patients we see uh, in consultation because uh, these lymphoma frequently occur in the salivary glands and you can have a benign salivary uh, parotid hyperplasia like this woman, for example. And this woman 
presented very close to the previous one, but this room 